Hi, I'm Donna Cryer, founder and CEO of the Global Liver Institute, and I have the honor of bringing you Liver Cancer Lessons, informational uh, educational series with liver cancer experts. Today we have with you, with us and with you, Dr. Lewis Roberts, um, professor of medicine uh, for Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Roberts is head of the Hepatobiliary Cancers Laboratory. He has a passion for research in individualized care and personalized medicine. We're also very proud that Dr. Roberts is a member of the GLI Board of Directors and our Liver Cancers Council. Welcome, Dr. Roberts. Thanks very much, Donna. So Dr. Roberts, I'd like to ask you uh, to tell us about um, the types of hepatobiliary cancers there are. Um, what are these cancers, what types there are, and, and what causes them? First of all, let's break down hepatobiliary. So it's, it's sort of a, a fancy word that uh, medical professionals use for the liver and the bile ducts. Oh, um, and so hepatobiliary, hepato, the hepato part uh, refers to, to the liver and then the biliary to the bile ducts. So the liver is a complex organ and um, one of its key functions is producing the bile. And bile is a liquid that is made by the liver cells, collected through the bile ducts, uh, which are organized kind of like in a, a, a tree configuration um, within the liver. So the bile ducts, we start out with the very, the most, what we would say, peripheral bile ducts, which are closest um, to the liver cells. Those would be like the very twigs on the edge of a tree. And then um, these bile ducts join together to become larger and larger ducts as we move towards the center of the liver. The purpose of the bile that the liver makes is to help with digestion primarily of fats in the intestines. So the bile ducts collect the bile and um, there's a gallbladder um, which is a small sac really um, that collects bile um, as it comes out of the liver and stores it right where the bile ducts join the intestine um, in the area of the intestine called the duodenum. There is a valve um, that holds the bile ducts shut. And that way the bile as it's produced by the liver tends to go into the gallbladder. Now what happens when we eat a meal, particularly one that contains fats is that the duodenum senses that there is fat in the meal. It produces a hormone that relaxes that valve at the bottom of the valve ducts. And, it all, and that same hormone also causes the gallbladder to contract. So the gallbladder contracts, releasing the bile through this valve into the duodenum and helping us to digest the fats that we eat. So this somewhat complex arrangement um, exists in part to allow us to best um, be able to digest and absorb the fats in the food that we eat. But actually there's a secondary um, function as well that the bile has, which is that the bile actually, that there's hormones in the bile that go out in the bile and they also act um, within the intestinal tract and the rest of the body to perform other functions as well. So this complicated system, but at the end of the day, what it means is that we structurally, we have the liver cells or hepatocytes, and we have bile duct cells or um, cholangiocytes this is the fancy term, term that we have for them. If you have damage to hepatocytes, that causes the hepatocytes to accumulate mutations or other changes in their genetic constitution so that they develop an abnormal capacity to grow, then we have the development of a hepatocellular cancer, so a liver cell cancer, or 
most commonly referred to as just a liver cancer. And, and we say that because the, the, the largest number or proportion of cells in the liver is from these hepatocytes. So that actually ends up being the commonest cancer that we have of liver cells. But we can also have similar damage occurring in the bowel ducts, the diseases of the bowel ducts, for example, that cause inflammation of the bowel ducts, that cause damage of the bowel duct cells, and that can cause the bowel duct cells to also transform and become cancerous. Then when, then when those um, cancers occur, we call them biliary tract cancers or cholangiocarcinomas. Because of the organization of the bowel ducts, you can have different types of cholangiocarcinomas or biliary tract cancers. So if we have um, cholangiocarcinomas or cancers that develop in the very peripheral parts of the liver, in the, in the, from the very smallest bowel ducts, we call those intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas. They're, they're cholangiocarcinomas or bowel duct cancers that form in the bowel ducts inside the liver. As the bowel ducts come out of the liver, they, you can have tumors that form in the larger bowel ducts. And we really have two types of those. We have a type that we call perihyla or hyla cholangiocarcinomas. Those are right up next to where the um, bowel ducts come out of the liver. In a sense, the hilum refers to what we call an opening. So it's really how, where the bowel ducts sort of come right out at the opening of the liver. Um, so we have these perihyla or hyla cholangiocarcinomas. Then we can also have bowel cancers that form after the point at which the gallbladder duct inserts into the bowel duct, so much closer to the duodenum. And we call those distal cholangiocarcinomas. So they're the farthest away from the hepatocytes. The other type of bowel duct cancer that we can have, of course, is a bowel duct cancer that occurs in the bowel duct cells that line the gallbladder. And so we call that a gallbladder cancer. So in terms of biliary tract cancers, we can have intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas, we can have perihyla cholangiocarcinomas, distal cholangiocarcinomas, or gallbladder cancers. The, import, the reason that is important to have these distinctions is that because of the different functions that these cells play and the different diseases or factors that can injure the cells, we actually have different etiologies for the different uh, types of bowel duct cancer. And we also have different ways in which people with bowel duct cancer will present to a physician or when they develop bowel duct cancer, different ways or different types of symptoms that they'll develop. But that hopefully gives you some of the scope of the liver and biliary and bowel duct cancers. It does, Dr. Roberts. Let me ask this additional question though. So some people have their gallbladders removed because of surgery. So um, if you have your gallbladder removed, do you still produce bile? Can you still digest fats? Um, how does that work? Great question. Um, so yes, um, you can have your gallbladder removed most commonly because it's possible to develop stones within your gallbladder. And when those stones block the entrance to the gallbladder, then it, they can cause pain, um, which leads to um, the surgical procedure uh, to remove the gallbladder. So the body then tries to adapt to the loss of the gallbladder a couple of different ways. One of the ways it tries to adapt is that the bile ducts that are the larger bile ducts um, just outside the liver, but before you reach the small intestine, tend to get larger. So what you have is you get some expansion so that there's an ability to store more bile before um, in, in a sense reach the um, small, in, small intestine so that once again, when you, did, when you eat a fatty meal, that valve can relax and then some of the, um, of the stored bile within the bile ducts 
will flow out um, into the small intestine. So that's an adaptation that the body makes to account for the fact that it's lost the gallbladder. Thank you so much, Dr. Roberts, for this liver cancer lesson. I look forward to the next.